Hey guys, it's Julie here, your resident natural hair nerd Z. At least that's what people that have made mad in my comments call me. I like to believe I'm more of a natural hair enthusiast though. So, I saw this video trending some time ago about this young woman who was having a mini meltdown in the morning as she tried to style her natural hair for work. And it struck me how many black women could relate to this. I was going to make a video on it then, but hey, better late than ever, huh? But yeah, let's go ahead and watch it. I'm actually gonna start crying. Wait. I have to be at work in 30 minutes. <laughs> I don't know what to do. I don't know how to make it look presentable to the public. Wet it first with some of this. I can't go like this. My hair is only long enough to do little space buttons. Is that a bit childish for work? <laughs> what do you do? What do you like? What do you do? Smoothie styler? I didn't know black people could use tangle teasers. They're actually pretty sick. I don't think I have enough hair to do a high bun. Wait, what is that hump? 10 minutes. Oh my gosh, wait, I'm actually, okay, I'm, okay, I'm gonna have a perk that. Maybe a bow? No. <sighs> my arms. <sighs> I'm actually gonna start crying, wait. This looks really bad. <sighs> I'm just gonna pin this down. Why is it still sticking out? Why is it still sticking out? Oh, our script grip gel on some earrings so I don't look like a Nigerian village boy. <sighs> Why? I'm just gonna colour it in with black eyeliner because I don't have time to piss around. All that work. And what did it get me? The only plus side is that I work with all white women. It doesn't matter how busted my hair looks, they always tell me I look nice. They don't even know what they're looking at. Morning, sorry I'm late. I like your hair. Do you? Yeah, you look gorgeous in your hair like I was having a breakdown this morning over it. You look like a model, don't yeah. you? Yeah. Oh, stop. All right. Thank you. You've made me feel better. When it comes to hair and its styling and maintenance, black women tend to struggle the most, I've noticed. And it's not even about how long the process of styling your own hair can be. But I think that what many black women struggle with is the texture of their hairs. Because I've seen many women who would have a meltdown if you ask them to style their own natural hair, take hours upon hours styling a lace front wig. So it's not the hard work or time or dedication that throws many women off balance. It's the hair itself, the texture. The hair in its bare, natural, stripped state. It scares many a black woman. The natural hair movement was all about showing black women that our hair should be acceptable without being chemically altered to fit in a beauty standard that wasn't meant for us anyways. I think now you are very likely to see women who have their natural hair, but this doesn't mean that they know what to do with it or that they like it or are proud of it or still don't fully depend on wigs. It's like, yeah, I don't chemically alter my hair texture anymore, but I still don't know anything about it or what to do with it, nor am I interested in learning. But the thing is, if we became more acquainted with our hairs, more accustomed to seeing it unaltered, it would not cause us to panic or break down when we have to deal with it. And I sympathize with women who are finding it hard. I understand. So women just had a big job, they are starting afresh, and they don't know what to do with their hair. But um, going back to this video, I think that if she had just moisturized and combed her hair and maybe patted it down to be in a teeny weeny afro, it would be so cute and low effort. Look at her, she's gorgeous, she's stunning. There was a time when rules were made to make sure that natural hairs couldn't be worn in certain places. But many people and places don't care anymore. Sure, you can meet a Regina George mean girl wannabe that will turn up her nose and tell you that your hair is not cute and that you should wear a wig. But institutions are not keeping you out because of it anymore. Nobody is telling you you can't wear your natural hair anymore. People don't really care. It's up to you now to create the new beauty standard. And many black women are still choosing to make straight Asian hair the pinnacle of beauty, the standard and the goal. They've dug their feet in and decided that this is the way. It's either this way or the highway. And it always comes back to bite us in the ass. I do have a personal beef with lace fronts, okay? And the reason is, first, many of these lace fronts they look a mess i've said this before i'm not going to stop saying it anytime soon i've seen enough in real life to know that it's not giving scalp and the pink hair doesn't look like it's coming out of your scalp and the over exaggerated edges gotta go <laughs> like why are we still doing those in fact it's quite rare to see a lace front that is done seamlessly and tastefully in a way that it doesn't look it doesn't only look good with the studio lights and camera filters but in person as well 
so it's like yes we want to make this hair type the beauty standard but it's also almost unachievable the cutoff mark is too high because most look a mess or will begin to look a mess when you've been under the sun for too long so the wigs are hard but their natural hair is hard too so what do black women do with their hair in this video i'll be telling you why your over dependence on wigs is detrimental to your hair and self-esteem and what you can do to change that if you notice whenever i drag wig culture it's mostly aimed at the lace frontals i've always maintained that most of these look a mess in real life except you invest in a really pricey one or you're some celebrity who has access to the best hairstylist or you're very wealthy you know but then again it's also like why are we doing too much to pass off someone else's hair that we bought as ours hairs that look nothing like ours i also think that a huge deflection tactic that black women employ when it comes to this conversation is that but but black women don't even want to look like white women we don't even wear white people's hair no we just wear asian hair there is nothing to explain. on behalf of black women everywhere white women we have never put your damn hair in our head what the fuck do I look like putting Swedish bundles in my head? As if that makes it better that you're wearing the hairs of exploited, underprivileged women in rural areas who had to sell their hair to feed their families for a couple of days so you can buy it off the traders at an exorbitant amount and flex on the gram with it. But, you know, that's a topic for another day. And we will have that conversation soon. Anyways, back to hair care. I think it's a very... I think it's a very relatable and a humbling experience when it comes to natural hair. There's that awkward stage where your hair is not short enough to be a TWA or a teeny weeny afro, but it's also not long enough to put in a ponytail or a puff and it just seems so exhausting to style. I think there is a level of self-consciousness that comes with that particular length of hair that makes many black women want to just hide their hair or not feel confident in wearing it as is. And many women would say, I love my natural hair. I just don't like this length because I don't know what to do with it. And this is fine. We can talk about that. But what's curious is that these women would turn around and then wear wigs almost the same length as their hair that they don't like, you know, because of the length. The only difference is that it's a completely different texture. It's loose and curly or straight and stiff and nothing like the hair that grows out of their hair. And this makes it acceptable easier to love i think when it comes to natural hair and getting to love and accept it one of the first step is being honest many of you don't have an issue with the length or whatever what you don't like is the texture and once you've identified your problem then you need to find a solution for some the remedy comes in a jar of relaxer or texturizer anything that loosens up their hair and makes it more digestible for them for some it comes from acquainting themselves with their hair types and getting to see what works for them I have a friend who used to tell me, oh, I can't wait for my hair to get your length. And then there was me who was wistfully looking at hers because I wanted to get this short bob braids then, but I couldn't get them in the length I desired so badly at that point because my hair was too long. I used to tell her, just enjoy your hair at any length because when it gets past that length, that's it. Except she cut it, of course. I was sending her all this style in spores and links and stuff to practice with her hair, but she would just keep pining after longer hair. And then when her hair finally got long enough, she texturized it. So it's like, what? Yeah, so you can try to repackage the reason for not liking your own hair, but it will always come back to show itself sooner or later. Anyways, the texturizer thing didn't go too well for her because her hair was starting to look like overcooked noodles. Some were straight, some were gay, some were curly, some were bent, some were broken. Me being the petty friend, I asked her if she was happy and satisfied now that she had ruined her hair. <laughs> I didn't get the reply. So it's like, hmm, were you silent or were you silenced? <laughs> but she decided to start all over. I think it's been like two years now and her hair is thriving. And she's gotten so much better at taking care of it. So maybe it needed to happen so she could fully appreciate her hair. And I mean the texture. Um, I think one of the reasons many of us don't know what to do with our hair is because we never wear it out. There's always that excuse of, oh, it's in a protective style. But I think that's an easy tap out to never get into deal with your own hair. And don't get me wrong. I think protective styles are great. In fact, I believe that people with kinky hair textures can't even grow or manage their hair properly if they don't add protective styling to their regimen. 
What does protective styling mean? It means that once in a while, you need to put your hair in or back or patewo or kiko and leave it alone for weeks. I don't hate wigs or think you should burn them all. I think that wigs serve their own purposes. But I think somewhere along the line, we stopped seeing it as an accessory and now they are more like an extra limb. We all know that one woman who cannot step out of the house without a wig. Normalize this. Normalize this. Normalize this. This shows beauty. This shows roots. This shows pride. This shows identity. This shows creativity. This shows diversity. You're not just another face blended in the sea of imposed Western beauty ideals. I think that other than for just beauty purpose or sticking it to the system or whatever, protective style really helps with growing your hair. Now, many of what you call protective style are doing anything but that. <laughs> Not all braids protect your hair. If you are doing braids that are so tight, your veins and hair follicles are throbbing, it's highly possible you're causing more damage to your hair than protecting it. These type of wigs, I wouldn't necessarily call them protective styles because of how she's ripping it out. It's going to cause some damage to your front hair if you don't soften the glue up with some baby oil or water. It damn near looks like she has a mask on. Our ancestors depended on what we now call protective styles to grow and care for their hairs. So I was doing some reading and I learned that in pre-colonial times, women's hairs had to stay styled. That was the beauty standard. It was always in some braided pattern or style. In fact, it was a thing of concern if women went about with their hairs unstyled. People assumed she was mad. Loose hair came with Western beauty standards. So it made me think whether this played a part in why many black women experience what some call hair depression. It's a thing. So hair depression is basically when your hair is not quote unquote done and you just feel like you've glued down. And then the moment you have it in some elaborate style, it's like, oh, be very afraid because a bad bee has returned, you know? I don't know about y'all, but my hair isn't done. I have nothing to offer the world. Nothing is funny. There's no humor in life. There's no color in it. I'm not even a person. I'm just a figment of my my. Have you myself. experienced that? Maybe... It's just our ancestors whispering in our ears like, hey girl, have you lost your mind? Come on, go and make your hair and stop looking mad. Be a queen. <laughs> but I think where it got toxic is when you have your hair in its natural state, maybe in an afro or something, and some girl in a bus down asks you why you haven't gotten your hair done and when you're going to make your hair. So it's like if we're talking African beauty standards, neither of us have our hair done. So why don't you go sit somewhere? <laughs> so what I would recommend to grow your hair is don't leave your hair out like this for too long. Always go back to a protective style after a while. And guys, wigs are not the only or best protective styles, especially those lace fronts. When you take them out without easing the glues off first with some solvent or oil or water, you're snatching up those fine hairs or baby hairs and it's damaging your hair. Sometimes these wigs come in with some tiny hair clips or brushes attached and it just rips out your hair or irritates your scalp the whole time you have them in. So there is this claim that wigs are to protect the hair. The lace front damages their hairline so they have to wear it more and rely on it now to cover up the damage. And it's, not, it's no more so much as a style done to protect your hair than a style done to hide your hair. Protective styles don't have to be just wigs. If you don't want to have a meltdown every time you have to touch your hair, get used to seeing it. Protective styles don't have to be boring either. Go to a stylist that is gentle and loving with your hair and get some braids or cornrows or twists. You can even wash your hair in these protective styles. Avoid hairstylists that do the things that I mentioned in my hairstylist horror story video if you want to keep your hair. I'll be linking the video above. Styling your hair shouldn't be so difficult when you've acquainted yourself with your hair. Give it a chance. Some of the styles our ancestors made may be outdated now, but we are creative people. We keep finding new ways to express ourselves and putting modern twists on these styles. Wigs don't always have to be the solution. And I think wigs are a great innovation, mind you. I like that you can go from one color to another and play with different aesthetics and wigs. But developing this over-dependence on them, keyword over-dependence, cannot be good for your self-esteem. It makes you idealize only straight hair, makes you lazy with taking care of your own hair, and it's very obvious how much big idealization is affecting us. 
I mean, now you have hairstylists who can't braid hair anymore, except it's been washed and conditioned and blow dried and straightened before coming into the salon. They don't even want to deal with your hairs in its natural state anymore. And they probably tell you that, come Caucasian or stay home. And it's happening with these big salons that overcharge my over dependence on wigs also make you close minded when it comes to your own personal improvement. Many women are now into skincare, which is great. We have all these 21 step routines and rules to make our skins glow in different weathers and conditions. But somehow when it comes to hair, many seem to draw the line. Then it's, it's too stressful and they would rather wigs. But it's like, if you don't want to take the time to care for your own hair, how would you know that your hair is probably breaking a lot because you've never gotten a protein treatment? Do you even know what a protein treatment is or that carrying wet hair for too long is the reason your hair is so weak and dry now? How will you know the best conditioners to use for your hair type? How will you know anything? How will you know you look cute in a teeny weeny afro and that sometimes it's okay to just wear your hair like that outside instead of always wanting to do something with it? Hmm? How will you know, sweet girl? How? Just once, I want to see a main character girly with fussy hair on Netflix. Just showing up to different scenes with cute hairstyles. Ugh, is that too much to ask? But I, I feel like because we keep making, we keep insisting on placing straight or loose textured hairs on a pedestal, we don't see enough of it in positive light in the media. And we keep getting characters who are wearing wigs, hereby othering natural hair. Another way to detox your mind from equating wigs with beauty and power is making natural hair your standard. Beauty is what is popular. If you create your spaces, especially your social media, to see more girls that look like you and have your hair type, you'd be more inclined to start caring for your own hair and seeing the beauty in it. This deserves to be its own beauty standard. I'll make a video soon on things that you're doing wrong that's resulting in hair breakage in your hair journey. But in the meantime, check out my other videos that could help you rebuild your relationship with your natural hair. And I'll see you in my next one. Bye!